Hey guys, come on downstairs. We are bringing a little MLB The Show 20 content to you today. We're in season number five of our Minnesota Twins franchise. We're playing games 126 through 128 on the road at Fenway Park against the Boston Red Sox. We come in with a record of 64 and 61. We are second place in the American League Central. We have three games here against the Red Sox, three against Detroit, and then four against the Mariners to finish out August. We are currently eight and nine so far in this month. And let's head into game number one of this series. 126th game of the season. The Red Sox are 69 and 55. We're sending out our ace and Cy Young hopeful. Sonny Gray, who's 12 and 5, a 2.43 ERA, with a 0.92 whip. And he's going to face Anderson Espinosa, making his 13th start of the year, a 4.48 ERA. And a 1.55 whip, 59 strikeouts to 36 walks for Espinoza. Let's get this one started in the second inning. Chance Cisco at the plate, facing Sonny Gray with a runner on second. And Cisco is going to drive this one into the gap in left center. It's going to one-hop the monster. Runner rounding third will come in and score. There will be no throw. And it's an RBI double for Chance Cisco, his 17th double of the season. End of the second inning, Red Sox have jumped out to a one to nothing lead. We go to the sixth inning now. Nolan Arenado batting 190 on the season. He's got runners on first and second. On a 2-0 count with one out, and Arenado with the outfield playing super deep is going to drop one in front of center fielder A.J. Pollock. And that will plate a run, and Nolan Arenado helping the team out for once. Matt Barnes comes in to replace Espinoza now. He's going to face Jace Peterson. Top of the sixth inning still with the bases loaded and still one out. And Jace Peterson's going to lift this one to right. That one is hanging up there. It may be deep enough to score a run. Here comes the throw for Mookie Betts. He's got a great arm, but it's not in time. As Roman Quinn, one of our faster players, comes in to score. Twins take the lead 2-1 over Boston. Mario Calero now, still in the top of the sixth with two outs, bases loaded. Needs a hit to score a run, maybe two. And he's going to lift this one into left center. It's going to drop in front of the left fielder, uh, Blake Swihart. And two runs come in to score. It's 4-1 to one Minnesota at the end of the sixth inning. Let's go to the eighth. Derek Wells. Setup guy, 1.47 ERA. Righties and lefties both hitting under the Mendoza line against him for the season. A.J. Pollock with two outs on an 0-2 count. And Derek Wells throws that wicked slider down and away off the plate. Gets the strikeout to end the eighth, and the Twins looking to get off to a good start in this three-game series. We move now to inning number nine. We're going to bring in our closer, Kevin Segrist. 32 saves and 38 opportunities, a 2.09 ERA. And righties and lefties are both batting under the Mendoza line against him as well. Marcus Simeon will lead things off in the ninth. On the first pitch of the at-bat, Simeon lifts it to right. Michael Conforto is there. He'll make the catch for out number one in the bottom of the ninth inning. Next up for the Red Sox, as we look at the league leaders here in saves, Kevin Segrist with 32 saves. Jake McGee, a one-time twin closer in this franchise, is leading the way for the Astros with 38. Johnny Manning, whoever that is, is second with the Mariners. All right, Mookie Betts is the second batter of this inning to face Segrist. And he's going to ground it to short. Here's a throw by Wilmer Flores. Just gets Mookie Betts by a step. And now we're down to two outs. Travis Shaw trying to keep the game alive for Boston. And he's going to look at that front door breaking ball. It's going to strike him out. And the Twins win game number one of the series. Sonny Gray went seven innings, gave up three hits, had 11 strikeouts, an earned run, and a walk. Miguel Sano, 1 for 4 with a double. Mario Calero, 2 for 5 with two RBIs. Roman Quinn, 2 for 4 with a run. Francisco Cervelli was also 2 for 3. And let's not forget, Nolan Arenado drove in a run as we continue to try to get him back into some type of situation where he can help us out. All right, game two of this series did not go well. 
Travis Shaw hit two home runs, two bombs, and the Twins scuffled and only managed six hits in the game. The Red Sox pounded out 19 hits and win the game 12 to nothing. Mookie Betts went two for five and had four RBIs on the day for the Red Sox. So game number two didn't go well. Series tied at one apiece as we head into the finale, game number 128 of the season. Steven Matz will take the hill for us. He's got a 3.30 ERA, 1.22 whip, but he is 8-13. And, and he, we're going to face Francisco Liriano, a one-time twin. He's in like his 18th season, I swear, I think. I don't know how long he's been pitching. A long time. I think he played with uh, Johan Santana for the Twins back in the day for a year or so. All right, Domingo Santana with the bases loaded is going to line it to third, and Travis Shaw stabs it, makes the catch, and the Red Sox get out of a bases loaded jam in the top of the first inning. Let's go to the second now. Delano DeShields Jr. with a runner on second and one out, facing Francisco Liriano. And Delino DeShields is going to lift this one to right. Mookie Betts ranging over, and it's going to get over the top of his glove and bounce to the wall. A runner's going to come in and score, and Delino DeShields is going to end up at second. An RBI double for DeShields, his 12th double of the season. All right, runners on the corners with one out for Nolan Arenado, whose average has dipped to 189 at this point. But Arenado's going to split the defenders in left and center. And that's going to drive in another run. Another RBI for Arenado. And here comes Super Mario to the plate. And he's going to get gunned down. So a bad decision to send Super Mario. But the Twins do get a run. And Arenado gets an RBI with his double. Wilmer Flores down the third baseline. Just inside the chalk. Arenado's going to come in and score. Flores will hold at first. And it's 3-0 Minnesota. Middle of the second, we've pounded out nine hits off of Francisco Liriano already. All right, Pedro Alvarez in the bottom of the second with two outs. The defense shifted to the right, and he's going to bounce it to the left side. A long way to go for Arenado. He's got to show off his cannon of an arm and get Pedro Alvarez by a half a step. We go to the third. Jace Peterson at the plate with a runner on second and nobody out. Peterson's going to lift this one to left. That one could be a monster RBI. It is going to be off the top of the wall. A run will score. Peterson's rounding second, heading to third, and he's going to be there standing up without a throw. Second triple of the season for Jace Peterson. And now we have Carlos Polino. One home run, two RBIs on the season. He's batting worse than Nolan Arenado at 188. But he's going to pound it right back up the box. Jace Peterson's going to come in to score and. Carlos Paulino picks up his third RBI of the season, and that's going to bring the pitching coach out to have a little talk with Francisco Liriano after he gives up 13 hits. We go to the sixth inning now. Travis Shaw at the plate for the Red Sox. Runners on first and second and two outs on an 0-1 count. Pitch from Steven Matz. Lifted to left. It's going to bounce in front of Eddie Rosario, and that's going to drive in a Red Sox run. It's 5-1. Travis Shaw has had a great series against us here with two home runs in Game 2. And now an RBI single. End of the sixth, it's 5-1. Minnesota, let's go to the seventh. Juan Quiroz comes in for the Red Sox, making his eighth appearance. He's thrown ten innings. And he's going to face Miguel Sano, who's two for three on the day with a double and a single. And he's going to add a bomb. Miguel Sano goes high and far over the Green Monster. And the uh, ex or the uh, launch angle on that one was pretty steep. 48th home run of the season for Sano. He may be headed for 60 home runs. Eddie Rosario at the plate now. And Eddie Rosario is going to go back to back. Hooks that one around Pesky's pole down the right field line. 24th home run for Eddie Rosario on the year. That's a career high for him. And the Twins up 7-1 to one as we stretch at Fenway. Let's go to inning number 8. The Red Sox bring in another reliever, Hank Barber, 
5.93 ERA in 44 innings on the season. Runners on first and second with nobody out. Wilmer Flores at the plate. First pitch of the at-bat, and Wilmer Flores is going to lift this one towards the monster. That one's going to bounce off the base of the wall. And a runner's going to round third. Here comes the throw, and it is not in time. Super Mario slides under the tag. This time he makes it. And the Twins score yet another run. They bring in now Stanley McDermott. The Red Sox bullpen, not that great. A lot of names that I don't recognize. And so they rely heavily on their starters, and that's what's gotten them into first place in the American League East. But their bullpen is atrocious, especially in this game. Twins score another run as Raimel Tapia beats out a ground ball to the right side that bounces off the glove of Pedro Alvarez. This one gets under the glove of Vasquez, and the runners are going to move up 90 feet. So runners on second and third with nobody out in the eighth inning. It's 9-1 to Twins. Eddie Rosario at the plate. On an 0-2 count, Rosario is going to lift this one to right. Mookie Betts, again, he has a great arm. Runners going to tag. Here comes the throw, and it's going to be up the third baseline, and Vasquez can't put the tag on Wilmer Flores. It's 10-1 to now, Minnesota with the lead. It looks like we are easily headed to a series win here at Fenway Park. The only question now is how many runs can the Twins put up? Domingo Santana, ground rule double, drives in another one. It's 11-1, to Minnesota. Carlos Polino at the plate. Chance to drive in another run. And Polino lifts this one high and deep to left. That one's going to bounce off the wall. It's going to drive in a run. Carlos Polino, with two RBIs on the game, equals his total for the entire season in one game here. Delino De Shields at the plate now with a runner on second. That's Carlos Polino out there. It's 12 to 1. The inning's still going. It's a nightmare for the Red Sox. McD er, uh, McDermott, yeah, he gives up another one into the gap. Carlos Polino comes in to score. It's 13 to 1, Twins. My goodness, the Twins are just pounding the baseball here. Aaron Loop comes in now, another reliever. I have heard of this guy. He's facing Mario Calero, who's 3 for 5 on the day. Calero. Down the left field line, that one's going to drop in fair. And another run will score. It's 14-1, Minnesota. Still in the eighth inning with two outs. Here's Nolan Arenado. He's two for five on the day, looking to go three for six. And he could drive in another run. Here's the delivery from the lefty. And Arenado off the third base bag, down the line. Runner rounding third. And Arenado has a three for six day, and that is huge for him. So the Twins win it 15 to one. They lead the season series two games to one. Miguel Sano, three for four with a home run and a double. Jace Peterson, two for four with a triple, a double, an RBI. Miguel Sano, three for four with a home run and a double. Everybody was hitting the baseball for Minnesota in this one. All right, I like to look at our slider set every once in a while and compare it with our team ratings. Uh, overall, we have the number 10 contact team in baseball, but we are 25th in batting average at 247, so that's a little bit of an issue, but it is trending upward, so I'm going to just leave it and see how it does. In power, we are 12th. Overall, we have 152 home runs, which is 9th. That's okay. Pitching, we are third. We have a 3.43 ERA, which is fourth. That's all right. Uh, Defense-wise, we are 25th. Our fielding percentage is at 15th in baseball at a 9.89. I'm okay with that. As long as we're within 10 on either side of the number, I'm okay. And I won't tinker with the sliders. Uh, Speed-wise, we are 25th overall in speed. We only have 24 stolen bases, which is dead last in baseball, but that one's okay because we don't have a good speed team. So the only one that really sticks out is our contact numbers, and it's trending up, so I am going to leave the sliders alone. I haven't touched them in a couple of months. So I like where they're at. They're producing the results that I would like. Uh, I really want to have the results uh, kind of reflect the team that we've built. And so that's that's how I, I judge my sliders and adjust them and stuff like that. So anyway, let's look at the standings. The Red Sox were leading in the East. Tigers with a two-game lead over us in the Central as we head into a three-game series at Comerica Park uh, starting in the next episode. So that's going to be a huge series for us. The Rangers leading in the American League West by three and a half games over 
the Angels and four and a half over the Astros. The Mariners are 68 and 60, and they are eight games back in their division. They would be leading the American League Central if they were in our division. They'd be tied with the Tigers. Wild card Angels Astros are the two wild card teams. The Mariners are three and a half back. That'd be cool if the Mariners could catch the Astros, maybe. We are five and a half back, so we're not completely out of the wild card race, although we are. It is more likely that we win the division than the wild card, but we'll keep our eye on both. The Nationals, seven and a half games behind or ahead of the Phillies, nine ahead of the Mets. The Marlins and Braves, both struggling again this year. Although the Braves have made some improvements over years past, they've been terrible in this franchise. In the National League Central, the Cubs, a two-game lead over the Cardinals, a six-game lead over the Reds, and a seven-game lead over the Brewers. All four of those teams have winning records. But the Cubs lead the division. Let's look at the West. This is where the Dodgers are absolutely running away with things. They have 90 wins already and nearly a 70% winning percentage. They've won three in a row. They're 90 and 39. The Giants have an unbelievably good record, yet they are 12 and a half games behind the Dodgers, but they will be a wild card team, no question. Uh, look at the wild card race. They are like seven and a half games ahead of the Cardinals in the wild card race. The Cardinals are second. The Reds are four games back. The Rockies, four and a half. The Brewers, and, or the Brewers at five. The Phillies at eight. So that's it for Minnesota Twins franchise episode number 267 here in season number five. It's Minnesota Twins franchise on Mama's Basement Sports Gaming.